Hi, I'm Rhonda of Adventures in Nomadness, and today it's all about awnings, manual awnings. I am going to show you the normal position and the carport position, as well as lots of tips. So with that, let's get started. Okay, the first step is lots of unlocking. That begins with a little black knob, so I'm going to go from the bottom up. I'm going to turn this about one and a half turns or so. You don't want to make this super loose, so it's really only a couple turns. So that's unlocking one thing. Then there is an arm lock that's right here. It has a tab that you're going to push up on, and then you're going to pop that out. We're going to repeat that on that end. And now the last thing is to push this little lever up, which is going to allow this to unwind. So unlocking five things. We are ready to actually pull out the awning. So I can reach up here with my hand but if you can't reach it, you're going to use the awning arm. So I'm tall enough that I can usually just reach up here and pull. Now, for any reason, it doesn't want to come out, stop. And this is the first time this has been unfurled in about seven months. We're going to take the strap and come down here. Now, the next step is to take the brace that's down here, and we're going to slide it all the way up, and it comes out right here. You'll see a little tab. See that? When that comes through, it's locked, so we do that on both sides. Okay, now that you have your arms out, you are ready to move your awning up. And you want to do that. If you've got two people, great. But we like to put it up maybe half on one end and half on the other and work our way up. You don't want to exceed a complete 90 degree angle because that puts pressure up here. So I'm going to start with this one. And what I'm going to do is pull the lever out. And this has a little knob right here that's going to come out and so we're going to try to catch one of these holes. So I'm going to come up about halfway, lock in. The other side, same thing, about halfway. Now, some people like to lift on this handle, and I like to grab a hold of the arm so that I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this part and go up. So. Now we're going to lift this up, and we like to usually have this front about straight out so that we're sure that the door will clear. Okay, now that I have that up as high as I want, I'm going to pull down the arm a little bit you'll see that the awning fabric's gotten tight. This is when I want to tighten this knob. Okay. And let's check that the door will open. Without scraping, not a problem. So now I can pull down, tighten here. We like to leave this a little bit lower than that side so that any rain, if we get it, will roll off this way. So the last thing that we want to do, make sure that we've got this wrapped around so that it doesn't start blowing around and wear. So that's it, as simple as that. Manual awning is now up and ready to use. So what about taking it down? And oh yeah, what about the carport position? Carport position, that's when this arm is no longer attached to the RV and is down here on the ground. You can either just do one like this. So pe some people like to just put one arm down like this so they don't run into it. They don't want that going across. Um, or you can bring down two. So I'm gonna go show you how to do that. 
Now it's really simple. One thing you need to do is grab a hold of this arm and we're going to release it with this. We're going to push in and then we're pulling out just like that. Now I'm basically holding the entire awning. So this is the only thing you need to be careful of. So again, I'm going to make that perpendicular to the ground, just like that. And then you want to stake it out. This is not an awning position that we use very often. It's something that we're just looking at. Um, for us, the normal awning position works just fine. Okay, now the part that you guys have been waiting for. How the heck do you get this back together? <laughs> so I'm gonna quickly do the reverse step and then I'm gonna go through a bunch of tips about taking care of it and what to do if things go wrong. Put the legs up. out of the carport position as easy as that so the first thing is we loosen this up again and loosen this knob up and because this is the highest one we're going to now reverse which is starting with this make sure you have a good grip on the arm I'm gonna lower this down I'd like to go about halfway we'll do the other end Again, good grip on the arm, release it. We're gonna come all the way down and there is a block nut, a blocking nut. And this should rest on that. So go down all the way to that and that's the close. Do this arm all the way down again till it hits the nut. Okay, that arm's in. Okay, now we're back down to this spot, which means it's time to release this. So I'm gonna Push my little tab over, which allows this arm to come through. And slide it all the way, again, as far as it'll go. Same thing here, little tab. Now, the fun part. So one thing we always make sure to do is take any dirt off that we can before we roll it back up. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure I have a good grip on that. If I know I can't reach this strap, which I showed you earlier you can, you're gonna to wanna to use this wand at some point. So I've got the wand ready and I'm going to flip this. As soon as I do, the spring is going to want to recoil. So I usually slide this down about halfway, flip the switch, and now I'm halfway and I'm going to slowly let it go back in. You don't want to let go of this black strap. Now this is where, if I needed to, I would slip this in to go the rest of the way. And it's done, except for the very last thing. I've got to lock everything back up. So remember this, lock, and I want to tighten down my black knobs. They don't be, have to be just snug, just, you just don't want them coming loose when you're going down the road. And we're done. So the big mistake that people make at this point is they think there's something else they've got to do, and they flip that little lever again, which you don't want to do. But we always do one last thing, and that's make sure if you can reach up and pull it that if you tug on it you can't pull it because if you can there's something wrong i've also got tips starting with never put your awning away wet if you do try to get it pulled out as soon as possible to get it dry never leave your awning out and then leave your campsite and not be around if a gust of wind or something comes up what happens when things go wrong well, the first thing that could happen is the strap here could slip off of this or it slips out of your hand. And if that happens, it'll disappear. And in order to get the awning open at that point, you want to release the 
lever over here to open position and then try to manually unwind it until the black strap appears. The other way to do it is sometimes you can grab a hold of the arm itself after taking the brake off and pulling that out until it unfurls enough that the strap falls out. If this end is not bent enough, if you're slipping off, you can bend these a little bit more. For longevity of your awning, we like to keep ours clean, but you can see that after storing it all winter long, it had what looked like some black marks on it. They, all, they also get dirt up above, and ours is out in the open. So if you can, try to pull your awning out about once a month, clean it, dry it, and then put it back away. That'll prevent any kind of mold. The big cause for mold and mildew is usually dirt. So the best thing you can do is before storing, and at least probably annually, do a full cleaning. The best thing you can use for cleaning is just ordinary mild soap and water. Avoid any oil-based cleaners, harsh chemicals, anything with bleach. Now, one thing that if you're using any kind of soap and water uh, around the RV, it can take the wax off. So one way to minimize that is to, when you're cleaning your awning, is to actually put water on this side of the RV so that if you do get cleaner on there, it will actually dilute it. So it minimizes the impact to your wax. Now the other way is clean that right before you wash and wax the RV, which is what we like to do. Now you saw at the beginning that our awning is not super clean. Well, for us, we didn't have the luxury of pulling it out this winter. So that'll be on our coming agenda is to clean it with some mild soap and water. If that doesn't take off your mold and mildew, there are awning specific mold and mildew removing products out there that you can use. Some of the cleaning products that people have chosen beyond just basic mild soap and water is something called LA's Total Awesome uh, type of a soap that comes in a bottle, like a 64 ounce bottle, that you can get at a dollar store. And that uh, has been used successfully. Some people like Simple Green. Uh, a method of doing that with Simple Green that people have used is you spray it on, you roll it up, wait 10 minutes, unroll it, spray it down and basically scrub it with a brush. So we haven't used that. We always use either a mild soap or a, an awning specific uh, cleaner. So for the arms, as far as cleaning them, you should clean them regularly as well. Keep any kind of debris that build, might build in there from the trees, etc., out. If you're finding that they still don't slide very well, then you want to try some dry silicon lubricant and put that inside the tracks, that should help. The other thing is that the little black knobs, sometimes those will require some lubricant as well. And last but not least, one of the checks that you should always do periodically on the RV as a whole, but specifically for the awning, is to look for loose screws. In other words, do you have a screw loose? And one of the areas is right here. So that, Here's a screw right here. If you were to see that starting to come out, that would not be good. And so you've got a screw right here. Now we've had ours for two years now and not had a single issue, including screws that are loose. So I hope you got some value out of this. I've had some fun making it and I've actually learned some things. So if you like it, give us a big thumbs up and I'll see you in our next video. Today, we're going to be talking awnings. Not just ordinary awnings, but manual awnings. <laughs> I'm gonna do that over.